Hello my fellow Freedom Builders and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is about the big topic in the stock market last week and that is the tax hike that is coming in President Biden's new tax plan. Now, um, normally when we're talking about taxes, there is some sort of fear that it will really affect the stock market a lot. So let's have a look at how this uh, new announcement of some higher taxes actually did an effect on the market. The second that Biden were out uh, presenting his new plans, and let's just remember, it's not even certain that they're going into effect, and this especially not anytime soon, uh, but the second he announced them, the market pretty much crashed. Now, what crash am I talking about? Is it this one? Nope. What about this one? Nope. This one? Nope. What I'm talking about is that little blimp on the radar there. Uh, this was the effect of the of the new tax hike plan and the day after the market just went up and uh, pretty much almost at least into all time highs here. So it didn't really have an effect. But I could see that on Twitter and Facebook and all sorts of media, um, people were outraged and thinking, oh no, you're killing the uh, US economy and all sorts of stuff. But what I want to do is take a bit of a historical look at it because this quickly gets into some political chat about pro or cons against higher taxes. What we should remember from Biden's uh, tax hike plans here, I was reading up a bit on them, and they are basically primarily at least hitting people that have more than $1 million per year in earnings, meaning it'll be a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of the US population. And the money will be spent on, at least partially, on Biden's infrastructure plan, as far as I can tell. And uh, that means that he's basically taking money from people that are quite wealthy, and giving them to, not directly to people, but putting some people into jobs that are in lack of jobs. And it is common knowledge, and this is not a political debate here, but it is common knowledge that if you give a millionaire a thousand dollars, and if you give a poor man a thousand dollars, it'll have two different effects. Now, if you give a millionaire a thousand dollars, he'll probably just uh, deposit them into a bank account and they might stay there, stay there forever uh, because he doesn't really need it. However, a poor man that's living off food stamps and uh, maybe he's homeless and uh, if he get offered a job where he can make a thousand dollars, then these extra dollars will be spent in the stores for some uh, basic necessities, for some food and so on, meaning it will go straight into spending meaning it will go straight into the company's revenue stream and to the bottom line, hopefully, and that will help the stock market. So I think that was, what, that was what people realized quite quickly, is that this might not be so bad. And by the way, it is a bit out in the future, so it didn't really have the effect that a lot of people fear. Now, I have an article here from uh, Fidelity, and it's talking about uh, history lessons from past tax hikes. And uh, what we can see there is, uh, I'll link to the, the article below, they mention a lot of different historical aspects here. But as you can see in this very interesting graph, we have three different kind of taxes. And this is of course from the United States. And we have the personal, the corporate, and the capital gains. And here you can see the history dating back to 1950 and up to 2013, with the effect of the uh, or the stock market, how it did in the year where the tax hike happened. And as you can see, 1950, 51, and 52, three years in a row, there was a tax hike in both personal and corporate taxes. This is something, at least the corporate taxes, that you would normally say would kill the stock market. Um, a, a thing is that in 2017, uh, Donald Trump, he lowered the tax rate for the, uh, for the corporate uh, America. And uh, the idea was that it would create some sort of trickle down effect, meaning that lower tax rate for the corporations would mean they had a lot of extra cash on hand. They would invest that in educating their employees to a higher level that would invest in all sorts of good machinery and producing uh, production rob robots and so on. But what happened is 
that most of the money actually went to uh, stock buyback programs, meaning it was pumping up the, the stock prices, but not really doing anything good for the company of an, a larger scale. So we can see that an, an increase in, in, uh, in the tax rate might increase the stock prices, but it doesn't necessarily mean that a tax hike will send the stock prices down. And as we can see, both in 50, 51 and 52, we saw an increase in personal and corporate taxes and the stock market went up these years. Now, this is not telling us if it had been higher up and then we saw a drawdown for instance from 30 to 22% and so on. It might have had some sort of negative effect, but it was not crashing the market. And as you can see here, a dramatic increase in defense spending. <clears throat> and that is what I was talking about, that normally when you increase the taxes, it is one, either to uh, to close some of the big holes in uh, some of the, the big imbalances between income and spending um, in the fiscal budget, or it is because you have some big plans of starting to spend a lot of extra money and you want to finance that plan with some extra taxes. That is what happened in 51 here, just after the Second World War. Then uh, we had the 1968 here, we saw an increase in personal, corporate and capital gains, and we saw a, a stock market up 8% that year. Then we have the year after that in 69, uh, we had capital gains uh, hike here, minus 11% in the stock market, Seven, 1970, we saw again capital gains hike. We had a 0% year. And then we saw a lot of capital gains increases here, actually all the way up in uh, 71, 72, 76, 87, 91, 93, and 2013. And all of the years, there was also some uh, including tax hikes here, but all of these years were good investment years with the stock markets going up. So what this actually means is that you cannot take the tax rate out as an individual factor and just saying because it is going up or because it is going down, uh, the stock market will do this or that. It is a bit of the same as when I made the video about the presidential elections where we could see that, for instance, the stock market has been doing a lot better under the Democratic president that under the Republican president. And as I also said, there is, we simply haven't, we, we don't have enough data to support that Democratic presidents are better or worse than Republican presidents for the stock market. We don't have enough statistics here. But what we can see is that we might not actually have to fear a hike in, uh, in, in the tax rates, uh, at least if the taxes, the increased taxes are spent in uh, a proper way. Now we can debate if this is a proper way to make this infrastructure plan. And I have been making a lot of videos about how United States are printing money and will it lead to inflation and so on and so forth. But the basic here is do not run, run out and sell all your stocks just because you hear something about a tax a hike from the United States. There is simply no historical base to uh, to, to base that fear on. Now, my prediction for the rest of the year, or at least uh, right now we have, uh, we are at the end of April here, 2021, and my prediction for the time up to the summer holiday, but probably also the time after the summer holidays up towards the new year of 21, 22, my prediction is we will see a rising stock market. There are stimulus packages being pumped out there. We still have a low interest. Um, there are a lot of positivity moving into the market due to the vaccine programs being rolled out and overall society getting up to speed again. So I don't think that even though uh, Biden is getting close to get this tax hike plan through or maybe he's coming out with even more tax hikes, as long as we are seeing this positive mood of uh, vaccines and stimulus packages and so on, I don't see any great obstacles that will break this bull market right now. Now, I think it is a fake bull market because I think that this uh, uptick in the economy is solely based on printing fake money. And I think that will come back and, and, uh, and haunt us later. 
But as of right now, looking at the stock market, and I know normally I'm, I'm telling you not to predict anything, but this is just my guess. From now on until New Year, my guess is that the stock market, when we are reaching New Year, will be significantly higher. Again, I am a trend follower, so I'm looking at the graphs. So if at some point the stocks start to bend and, uh, and, and, and the prices are going down, then I'm selling my stocks, or at least the ones giving sell signals. So sometimes I get a comment from one of you that is looking at a two-year-old video and saying, oh my, this didn't age well. Uh, and that is normally because the, the person haven't looked at the videos I've done in between, because normally I'm not predicting, I'm relating to the current market and the sentiment and the psychology in the market. So right now I'm actually quite calm and I think the market will continue up. However, there'll be a lot of volatility and right now we are in the middle of, a, uh, of an earnings season and the um, but just today we are having the six largest companies in the United States coming out with their earnings. So that will create a lot of volatility. However, the overall trend is bullish, no matter if we are seeing tax hikes or not. That's all for today. A quick little historical tax video. I hope you learned something. Remember to subscribe and like the video and I'll talk to you again soon. Take care of yourself and your money out there. Bye for now.